بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك يا الله وإن شاء الله we will be starting today our session uh, continuing the tafsir of Surah Yasin Last time we stopped at Ayah 58 and inshallah we'll go from here inshallah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون and you uh, you uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى is talking to the criminals now and he's saying stand apart today the word امتازو means to be separated so they were separated from every khair, from mercy. They were separated from uh, the good people, so they will not receive anything good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed those criminals, those losers, he showed them that the believers and the winners are going to uh, 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 they are going to uh, paradise and they are going to some of them to the Firdaus Allah and so on. So that that thing that happened to them just to see just to see that people are going to paradise and they are going to Jahannam that by itself is will cause them so much sorrow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatened them in dunya. He sent them messengers. He did uh, all that that uh, uh, he wanted to do just to be merciful to them. But they did not follow him. So this is why they will be punished in the day after. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Did I not command you, O children of Adam, that you should not worship shaitan? Verily, shaitan is your worst enemy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that shaitan is a plain enemy to you. So you did not listen. Allah, when he sent the, the messengers, he taught, he, they told people that be careful. Shaitan will keep whispering. Shaitan will, will do whatever he can just to make you away from Asirat al Mustaqim. If we go back to the to the story of Sayyidina Adam, Shaytan was doomed out of uh, Jannah because he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did not uh, 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 prostrate for Sayyidina Adam. So he was outcasted of Jannah. But what did he do? He sweared by, by the, uh, the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will for sure mislead his people except among them those who, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen as uh, uh, by his servants. So those servants, he cannot whisper to them. Why? The problem is not between shaitan and Allah. It's between shaitan and, and people. He promised for sure that 
he will work. That's in Surah Al-A'raf. So he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will surely wait for them on your straight path. Why? Shaitan is not going to go to the bars, uh, to the gambling stations. He's not going to go there because he knows for sure that these are only already people who got astray. But he wants to go to the places of worship just to whisper to people. He wants to whisper to people not to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? What did he do? He ordered his servants not to worship shaitan, not to listen to his whisper, because إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Verily, he is a plain enemy to you. So what will he do? He will, he will try to uh, make people uh, astray from the uh, uh, right path. If he cannot, then he will try to uh, uh, make them have shirk in their niyyah. So their actions won't be for the sake only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So their sawab, their reward will be decreased. He knows he cannot get them astray, but he will try to do anything he can to make them away from full reward. So he said, لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ I will get to, to your servants from uh, um, uh, between their hands, from behind them, from, the, from their right, from their left. He wants to go in all directions. But he forgot to say from above them or from below them. Why? Because if the servant is connected to Allah, then he is connected from above to the uh, dignity of servitude. And he is going away from below, from the humiliation of being a follower to shaitan. So shaitan could not get into this, the, the, these people. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on and says, so he said, Alam a'had ilaykum ya bani adama an la ta'abudu shaytana innahu lakum aduwa mubeen? Didn't I command you not to uh, worship shaytan? Then he said, wa ani abuduni hadha siratun mustaqeem. And that you should worship me. And that is the straight path. So worship me, why? Worship me because, because of so many things. The first one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and he sent you the messengers. He loved, he loved his creatures. Allah loves people. So he wanted, he wanted them just to enjoy his bounties in the day after. Wa'ani'abuduni. So this Hatha call is a call to follow the Sirat al Mustaqim. What is a Sirat al Mustaqim? Obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, leaving away what He ordered us not to do, following the Quran, following the Sunnah, getting closer to Allah. This is the Sirat al Mustaqim, this is the straight path. And to adding to this is the disobeying of shaitan. Shaitan will whisper, but we have to get stronger so not to be affected by his whisper. So Allah is calling people to the sirat, to the tariq, the straight path. 
And whether people loved this surat or did not love it, whether they found it easy or they found it difficult, they have to follow this surat. So in dunya, we are walking, we are going along this, this tariq, this road. And we are going, when, when there is a road, you are driving, you will go, just you pass through this road and you go to another thing, to another station. So our life in this dunya is just as if we are passing from one station to the other. So the road that we are following has a beginning and has an end, has a from and has a to. What's the end of this, this road? It's death. Where does it lead to? Either paradise or hellfire. So when we follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we follow him, then what happens? We are on the right path, inshallah. That would lead to the high heavens. And of course, since there is no rest in this dunya, there will be obstacles on this Surat al Mustaqim. It will not be easy. Again, Shaytan will whisper to you when you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaytan will tell you, oh, and when you when you want to wake up for Fajr, oh, it's cold. Just a few more minutes. It just and then just cold in. Time is you still have more time. You keep delaying, delaying, delaying until. You either do it at the end or you miss it. Normally, the worship at the beginning of its time has support, has something that will push you to do it eagerly and uh, easily. But at the end, it will be as if something, something oh, oh, I have to do it. It's not the same way as I want to do it at the beginning to enjoy it to get the highest reward for it. So this is what shaitan promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do. وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Indeed, shaitan led astray a great number of strong people. Did you not then understand? So you are not the only ones who shaitan got you astray. There are so many people, so many people who were misled by shaitan. And those people were strong enough, they thought that shaitan cannot get into them, cannot affect them, cannot whisper to them. So get prepared, get prepared so that you will be able to walk on the Surat Al-Mustaqeem easily, even though there are difficulties, but you will, you will be able, able to overcome these difficulties by the help of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And it's not only you, when you care about your children, you would be able to raise them on the same Sirat al Mustaqim. You will be raise them in a way that they will be able to choose what's good and what's bad. You will raise them in a way that you will care about their akhirah. You will raise them in a way that they will be strong leaders who uh, other weak people can follow. You will get the reward of everything good you are doing. So just think, أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ So what happened to those strong people? Shaitan came to them from the uh, from the road of um, uh, things that they love to do in this dunya. So these things 
made the way of worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more difficult for them. But only if they used their intellect, they would know the reality. And they would know that their sound intellect would order, order them just to follow the right path. Because they know that if they don't, Jahannam is waiting. And this is what Allah is saying in the next ayah. This is hell. This is the hell fire which you were promised. Allah sen uh, sent the messengers to warn people that if you don't follow the Surat al Mustaqim, if you don't follow the right path, then you will, you, uh, a great punishment is waiting for you. So what will happen to them? The losers on the day after, they would look into the hellfire and the result is utmost fear because they know that this would be their final destination. They know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to order them to order angels to throw these losers in hellfire. And when they do, then burn their in this day, this day, which is the day of judgment. Burn in her fire. Bima kuntum takfurun. And that's for what you used to disbelieve in. Islawha. Burn in it because of your disbelief in the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you, in the messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent. You disbelieved in everything. Okay, this is the, the punishment. يَوْمَ يُدَعُونَ إِلَى نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ دَعَى هَذِهِ النَّارُ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ بِهَا تُكَذِّبُونَ The day when they will be pushed down by force to fire. They will not uh, get there gently, no. This is the fire which they used to belie. What does the word islawha al-yawma bima kuntum takfurun? What's al-yawm? Al-yawm is today. What's the, what's the emphasis on this word? Because earlier, yesterday, which was the dunya, which was their life, yesterday was gone with, uh, with the things that they loved and they enjoyed and nothing is left except the humiliation of the sin that the sins that they were committing in dunya they will be ashamed that they did not believe they would be ashamed that they sinned they would be ashamed that they did not follow the right path so what will happen to them? They are burning in hellfire. Today, again, this is an emphasis to the day of judgment. We shall seal up their mouth. They, they will be voiceless. They will be speechless. They will not be able to say any word by their mouth. So earlier in dunya, their hearts were sealed. So disbelief would not get out of it and faith would not get into it. But today, today their mouth, mouth will be sealed. Why? So they would not give excuses. They would not uh, keep on denying and belying. 
They would not uh, give uh, explanations why they uh, belied, why they did not believe. So they will not be able to ask for forgiveness because this is not the time for it. The time was in dunya that they could have done istighfar. In dunya, they had a chance to work more, to erase their sins, to do istighfar. But that ended when they are now before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They won't have any, any other chance. So, we shall seal up their mouth and their hands will speak to us. Their hands will witness what they did. What they did in dunya. They will say we used to obey, obey him, obey the person, the, our master. If he wanted to hit someone, he would raise the, raise the hand and he would hit and the hand would obey. Same thing for the tongue. They, would, they want uh, the tongue is ordered to say whatever a man wants to say whether good or bad. But for those people, they were saying only bad things to other people. So the tongue is ordered to obey. The hands are ordered to obey. But when they are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will happen? Those limbs are going to witness what that man did. Who else will witness? And the legs also will bear witness. Where did they go? So they went to so and so place that are not uh, that they were not supposed to go to. Places of haram, places of gambling, bars here and there. Their legs will witness to that. So. Everything will witness to what they used to earn. If we want to give an example for this, we can uh, give the example of the soldiers in a war. In the war, the soldiers are ordered to obey their officers, their chiefs, blindly. Even if the orders were wrong, they had to fulfill them. They have to obey. But when they go back from the war, they would give a report to the higher command, to the uh, officers of the officers who they, were, they used to obey in the war. And this is وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى This is uh, something similar that these limbs will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the highest supreme, the highest core, court and they will talk. So بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ The word يَكْسِبُونَ uh, the the uh, Getting something, doing something, is of two types. Someone might do a sin, an action, a bad, a bad, a bad deed, but unintentionally, without any previous intention. So he would feel sorry. He would uh, repent. He would do istighfar. And he would try not to do it again. So this is the first, the first way of deeds, the first type of deeds. The other type is that someone would do a, a sin and he will show off that he has done that sin. He won't repent, but he would go on 
and he would talk to people. Oh, we went to so and so place to uh, do so and so bad things. They will show off. So the hands, the mouth, the legs, everything will witness on a human being in the day after what they did and why they did it. And the person cannot do, cannot say any word. They will be speechless. Something else. And if we will, if we wish, we would surely obliterate their eyes. So what will happen? And they would race to find the, the path, but how could they see? So we could have misguided them when they cannot see. So who is going to be guiding them? How they could be guided? And if we willed, we could have deformed them. We could have paralyzed them. We could have transformed them into in their places. We could have turned them to stones or to anything we will. They would be unable to go forward, not nor even to go backward. Then they would have been unable to go forward, to take a new path, nor they could have turned back to the path they already follow, which is leading to Jahannam. They could not change that. Allah has warned them when he, when he advised them not to worship shaitan, not to obey shaitan. Whenever someone wants to do any, anything, you just, just have a second and think about it. Will I be obeying Allah or shaitan? Will this be on the scale of my good deeds or my bad deeds? And then do it or not do it. And a person who, uh, he whom we grant long life, we reverse him in creation. What does this mean? وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نُعَمِّرْهُ means to give long life, to grant long life. Some people live 80 years, some people live 90 years, some people live 100 years. Some people have a short life, they, they die young. Children, young people. So, وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ Those who we give long life, نُنَكِّسْهُ so he will go back to what he was earlier when he was young, when he was a baby, when he was a child. So he will not be as strong. He will not be as energetic. He will not have the knowledge that he has when he got older. And this is what happens. If he is walking, someone needs to hold his hand so he doesn't fall down. Or someone needs even to carry him because he cannot walk anymore. And this is mentioned clearly in Surah Al-Hajj. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْذَ لِلْعُمُرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَعْلَمَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا And amongst you, there is he who, who is brought back to old age. Old age, so that he knows nothing after having knowledge. 
Sometimes you see, you hear of people having Alzheimer's. They will forget everything. After they were professors, after they were doctors, after they were lawyers, after they were so uh, uh, intellect, they were intellectual, yeah, nothing. So when a person gets older, he needs a special care. When a person becomes old, you will feel that taking care of that person is getting sensitive because the person himself will feel more sensitive than what he was earlier. He will be more sensitive because he feels that he is a burden to others. So if, if someone says any, any word that they used to say to him, the same word earlier when he was healthy, then he, he would not have sensitivity from that word. It won't affect him. But the old person would, would be more sensitive. Sometimes all uh, the old parents would advise something to, to their child. Uh, to their uh, children who are getting old, of course, now. So the children would think, oh, we know more, be oh, way better than them. They are old. They don't know uh, uh, life, uh, real life. They, uh, they cannot follow uh, the uh, new technology. They, they, they. So they would show the parents that they have something uh, less, whether in thinking, in uh, ideas, in uh, uh, working in this life. So what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Do not say uff to your parents. Do not show them that you, you, you don't like what they say. Do not show them that you don't like what they order you, especially when they get older. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this advice to children and he did not give it to the parents. He did not ask the parents to take care of their children, but he asked the children to take care of their parents, especially when they get old. Why? Because the nature of the parents is giving, is loving their kids. But that's why Allah wants the uh, children to honor their parents when they get older. He wants to show, to show them that they are everything in his life. So whoever has parents alive, just be good to them. Show them your love. Show them just a little bit of their sacrifice that they did for you when you were young, when you were a child, when you were infant. And if someone lost his parents, just make istighfar for them. Do charities for them. And remember always that Reading Al-Fatiha for them would be a very valuable gift. In one of the narrations, uh, one of the friends of Allah dreamt of his friend uh, who passed away. And he dreamt that he was passing by a graveyard and someone read Fatiha and sent it as a gift to the people who were, who, were, who were deceased and who were in their graves. So everybody was getting up, rushing, trying to get these jewels that was uh, uh, sent to them, except for his friend. He was, he was surprised. So he went 
uh, to the to the place where he used to live, and he asked, "What? Who? Who? Who is the family? What happened to his family?" He said, "After his death, his son was very righteous, and he was so good to his to his father, and he would always read." Quran for him and send him khatam after khatam after khatam. And he understood that the people in their graves wanted the jewels of the Fatiha that was thrown to them because they don't have people to read Fatihas for them. They don't have, have uh, someone to do good for them. Later on, he had the same person had another dream that his friend is collecting the jewels with the others. And when he asked, they told him that his son died. So just remember your parents. Just remember to send them gifts if they are dead. Read them Quran. Do istighfar for them. Do umrah for them. Do hajj for them. Just give them gifts. Try to, to do something that you wish to do in their life and you, you didn't do. Will they not then understand? Will they not think about how they were created? Will they not think about the life cycle? They were created weak. Then they got stronger. Then they became gray haired. And then they became old. And then they realized that they were created for another life, for another world that is eternal. They understood that this life is going to an end. So, think. Think of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of the messages. Think of the messengers. Think of death. Think of resurrection. Think of standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think for your, for the, the scale and for, good, for your deeds. Think. Take the time to think. You have time to think now. But later you won't. You have a chance to do good to yourself now. You have a chance to make up what you missed. But later you won't. And we haven't taught him poetry. Him is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor is it suitable for him. So what's the reason of this ayah? Uh, we all know that Quraysh, when they belied Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they, uh, they said that he is a magician, he is a poet, he is a liar, he is, he is. So Allah is denying that his messenger is a poet. And he said in another verse in Surah Al-Shu'ara in Ayah 224, he said, Poets only uh, uh, the deviators follow them. But Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was not a poet. Yes, he is reading the Quran. Yes, the Quran is as eloquent uh, more than anything they can create or they can say. Because, you know, the Arabs were so eloquent and the Quran came with their language, but they couldn't do, they couldn't make one single ayah similar to the Quran. They were poets, but Quran was not poetry. They were poets, but Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was not a poet. So it's not the society, it's not the environment that taught him how to say 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. So this is the honor that his knowledge is divine knowledge. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, did not say poetry and was not a poet because it wasn't suitable for him to be a poet. And you know that when earlier when they used to say poetry, they used to uh, praise the kings and uh, say things, maybe those things are not his characteristics even or are not his mirrors just to gain some, some money. So there is some type of uh, lying in poetry. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu was not a poet and Allah said that. In huwa illa dhikrun wa Qur'anun mubin. This is only a reminder. The Qur'an is only a reminder. It is a clear Qur'an. So, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so careful, was so accurate in uh, uh, saying or in delivering the message and in giving the people the real, exact, 100% words of the Quran. Nothing was changed. So, again, this is an emphasis that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not a priest, was not a poet, was not a liar, was not a magician, was. He was only a messenger of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala who uh, 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 Jibreel Alayhi Salam uh, gave him or revealed to him the Quran. Now, Sometimes you feel that there are people who are not Muslims, when they hear the Quran, they start to cry, even though they don't know Arabic. They don't know, they don't understand what's said. They never heard the Quran before. So why? What happens? This is called in Arabic, infi'alu al-mawajid which means that the eyes would tear when they hear the Quran. They don't know the language, they don't understand the words, but the Quran is the words of Allah. And those who are listening to the words of Allah are the creatures of Allah. And the words of Allah would affect the heart of those who are who have pure innateness? This is the condition. Some people would hear it, even Muslims, it would not affect them. Some people you will see that they they are starting to crying and crying and crying. It affected the heart. So this is, this is the real words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why, why things happen? Why, why is it like this? Okay, let's take uh, an example, a practical example. If we are uh, drinking tea and it's hot, what do we do before we take the sip? We just blow in it. Just, oh. A little bit, so it gets, uh, so the surface of the tea just gets a little cooler. Now think of another example. In winter, when we get out and our hands are freezing, what do we do? We blow in our hands just to make them warm. The blow is the same. The same person blew once in the cup of tea and once in the in his hands but the result is different and this is why we have al-quran is one thing but 
Some people are affected by it. Some people are not. لِيُنذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا To warn whoever is alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ How, how, how would, uh, what does يُحْيِيكُمْ mean? يُحْيِيكُمْ means to يُنْجِيكُمْ to save you. So listen to Allah, obey Allah when he calls you. Why? So to save you in your next life. There is life that's going, this life is going to end. This is materialistic life. But there is a life that, the moral life that will not, that will not end. But the results will appear only in the day after. And this is, this is the moral life. So it will give you value in the day after. But what, what does it give you in this dunya? It gives you sakina, it gives you safety, it gives you tranquility. Now where would we get all this from? From the Quran. So when we read the Quran, we understand it affects our hearts. We want our hearts to be ready to gain the light of the Quran. When our hearts have the light of the Quran, then our life will be lit by this light. Our life will be shining. لِيُنذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا وَيَحِقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And that word may be justified against the disbelievers, those who did not believe. It's, the Quran is a mercy to, be, to the believers. And it's an evidence against the non-believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned people. And whoever go back in the day after to find himself of the winners, he should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made him or gave him the power to do what's good, to be able to overcome shaitan, to overcome the whispering of shaitan. And that who found himself a loser, he should blame himself and only himself. So, Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to get us connected to your book, to get us connected to the book that who you revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to get us to be connected to the words that you chose in your book, Ya Allah to enlighten our hearts with the light of the Qur'an, Ya Allah. To enlighten our graves with the light of Allah, of the Qur'an, Ya Arham Rahimeen. Allahumma ja'al hunuran lana fi hayatina. Ya Allah, wa salli allahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Insha'Allah, we will continue. Insha'Allah, next week. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته